Gateway team. And these are my contacts here for someone who wants to contact me. And um, in the first part, we will take a look at uh, the current status of the LTP runner, which is our main application for the one who don't know what LTP is. Well, LTP is, is a framework which is used by our team to test uh, Linux kernel, and it has more than 20 years old testing suites. Most of them are have been rewritten during the, the years because historically, historically, it was a messy code base, and uh, now the situation we have when we are testing with LTP is the following. We will focus on this part, which is a uh, run LTP. And um, it works like this. We have some test executables, which are our tests used to test some functionalities of the kernel. We have the testing suites, which are associating some uh, labels with the binary, in particular the test we want to execute. And we have run LTP, which is getting testing suites and providing a report after the execution. Um, run LTP worked for a while, uh, but it has a, a few downsides, especially it runs only on host and it's really hard to handle the kernel crashes, such as kernel panic, oops, and freeze. It has a code um, which is a bit messy and hard to read. It's a mixture of bash and C. Sometimes it's uh, it's quite hard even to debug it. And um, it generates some logs and um, let's say some reports which are really hard to parse, especially some logs we will see pretty soon. It has some obscure functionalities and options. Uh, and some of them are there. We don't really mm, know if they are still working. And since the new LTP API, which is a new way to run LTP tests, to write LTP tests, um, to make them pretty easy. And since it has been introduced, only 31 out of 5,004. 700 commits belong to run LTP runner, which is mostly bug fixing. And uh, so this is one of the reasons why we decided to rewrite L run LTP. Uh, now I will share my screen to show you how run LTP works. And um, so run LTP can be found inside the OPT LTP installation folder, which is our default in Tesla in uh, install folder. It is a bash script, as you can see here, and it's mostly not developed anymore. Um, Andrea, could you increase the size of the... Oh, sure, sure. Thank you. Okay. So can you see him now? Yes, it's better now. Okay, nice. So as you can see, it's uh, a bash script, which is not, not developed anymore. Uh, most of the options are not used. We can check them by using the help. And uh, yeah, these are, and even the impagination is a bit weird. Sometimes the tabs are missing. And, but as you can see, there are some really legacy old cold stuff like email to or minus C or minus T files and, and some other. Um, if we want to run a testing suite, we can use a minus F option. And this is the result we have. First of all, we have a permission denied because we need some permissions in the OPT LTP installation folder at the moment. So this is what happens. As we can see, it's already difficult to see um, like something human readable output from run LTP. 
it's hard to parse it because we have these weird tags here and uh, many, many options which are coming out from the standard output. The run LTP uh, applications give some results inside the results folder that are more human readable. And we are going to take a look at one of them. This is what we have at the end with the results of run LTP. Um, this is the human readable way. Otherwise, we have an output folder which has a mixture of failed file, which are the, fi the files where the failed tests are, and tconf where the tests didn't find a way to run. And uh, we can take a look at the results log, which is the output of the run LTP. So yes, even if you take a look at the HTML, which is already generated by me in a few days ago, we will have something like this from run LTP. Which is, of course, something uh, that was pretty common in the in the 2000. Now it's not used anymore most of the times because we don't need this. We just need a, a file uh, which can be parsed to generate HTML results inside an automation system, for example. So we get back to our points and we've seen that run LTP is working only on host and it has a few, um, it has a few downsides. So first of all, we've seen that it's not it's only working on host. This means that we would like to run it uh, tests inside some different system under tests, for example, virtual machines, embedded system or remote servers, because in this way we are able to reboot the, the machine, for example, or the, the virtualized system in order to run the next tests and uh, don't crash the system where the run LTP is running. So to collect reports and have a report at the end. Our, let's say our target at the end is the following. We will have a new run LTP, um, which is connecting somehow to virtual machines or remote embedded system or running on host and generating a report at the end. So we take a look at the generated uh, reports we would like to have. Well, of course, they must be really um, easy to be parsed by automation frameworks, so such as OpenQA, which is our main automation framework, or other automation frameworks, such as Jenkins or Circle CI, whatever you want. Um, what do we need most of, um, most of the time is it's just a, a report, which is in a well-known format such as JSON, XML, or JUnit, or whatever we want. And of course, choosing the right language is really important because it the, it's um, it's really important because we've seen that Bash and C are not well suited for this purpose and they don't provide a lot of the things we need to, for example, um, build some new SUT, um, new SUT uh, protocol um, communication or to generate the reports easily. With external library support, we can have, uh, of course, much support from the community. And so then our first choice has been to use a high level language such as a scripting language. In the part two, we'll take a look at what uh, run LTP and G looked at first. Um, the first prototype has been made in Perl. It has been written by Cyril Rubis. 
and uh, you can see it in here in in the link here it's uh, modular and it's using SSH uh, and a serial port to communicate with uh, our system under test and it produce results such in a JSON format for example but the community wasn't really happy about the Perl language so the code uh, has been rewritten using Python in this case and uh, so we decided to build the new uh, Python based run LTP ng. It's pretty similar to the Perl implementation. Um, it's class based in this case. Um, it's plain Python 3.6 uh, plus, but without setup tools. We, so we won't use peep or virtual env. We just run the the script, which is our entry point for the application. And uh, the code testing coverage is around 92%. That means that the code is well uh, tested most of the time, so we can improve it more if we want, but it's already a nice uh, target for us. And uh, it's under the GPL version two license because we want to integrate it inside the LTP upstream in the next future. This is our tree, and um, we can now start to look at the new run LTP and G and see how it works and what are the features inside it. So I will share the screen again, I will show you how it works. So here we are, uh, we get back to the run LTP and G folder. It's, um, uh, I was just, let me go in master, yes. So, yes, we have the, um, the clean folder is the following. We just have a, an LTP folder, which has inside the, um, the implementation of the, of our application. And we have the entry point, which is the run LTP ng. It's really easy. It's just calling the main run method at the moment. If we run it, we will see the help and most of the options which were before inside the, in the old run LTP now are not here anymore. We just use the most uh, useful ones here and uh, we can start to take a look how to run run LTP and G and what's the output for example that it's coming out from it. So we will use minus error to run uh, testing suite. I usually uh, use math because it's really it's well suited for the presentation at the moment, but we have many of them. So this is the execution of the math uh, uh, testing suite. We can see that the tests have been executed. Um, we have the label which is used by the run test file and uh, the result of the test uh, with a color signing what happens. Um, I made also a presentation uh, run test just to show you different colors and this is what happens when there is a failure, skip broken, the color is changed. Now it's much easier to see what's going on uh, during our uh, execution and the reason is why we get rid of all of the standard output of the tests. But if we want to have the, the output of the test, of course, we can just use the verbose mode. And with verbose mode, we will have the output of the original tests. So we have now two options. We have the quiet mode, and we've seen it. And we have the verbose mode, and this is the one. If we want to generate new reports, we can just, OK, I will delete the previous one. Can just uh, say okay, generate my JSON file after the execution of the math suite. And we will have a JSON file. This is of course really easy to parse for any automation framework. As you can see, uh, it has all the information we need for each one of the tests, labels, status standard output which is really important 
and uh, at the end we have of course the information of our environment or the system under test which is of course ram cpu architecture etc as you can see here there is a temporary directory for each one of the execution we have for each one of the session by default it's inside the tmp folder but uh we can change it if we want by using the the option um this is our temporary folder we have some rotation of the temporary folder at the moment so if a new session is uh, um, run and there are already five other sessions inside the temporary folder the the um, the older one is re removed. And then we have a sim link, which is latest. It's always pointing to the latest uh, um, session temporary folder. So this is really easy for us because we can take a look at what happens inside the, our latest execution. There is a debug log, and this debug log is what run LTP NG is doing during the execution. So if we want to debug the, the, the application, we just can take a look at this file and see what's going on inside the, uh, inside the run LTP NG without looking at the code most of the times. And also we have always our results.json, which is generated by default. So the minus J option is there. In, but we can also take a look at this file, which is exactly the same one we've seen before. And then in the end, there is a run this folder, which is the folder having inside all the testing suites we, uh, we downloaded during the session execution. And as you can see, our run test file has been downloaded, and this is how it looks like. But we've seen that the current uh, run LTP NG has um, uh, also the QEMU uh, support, a virtualization support that we can see by using minus minus suit or minus s help. We can run testing suites inside a QEMU instance, for example. And this is really useful as we can see because um, if a test is crashing the system, we can reboot the virtual machine and eventually run the, the next test if everything is okay, of course. So we will take a look at the support of QEMU. The syntax is similar to the QEMU uh, syntax itself. We will use an image which is already made by me before for the presentation and uh, we will run the math uh, testing suite using QEMU. So let's take a look at what happens when I run it. So at the moment the virtual machine is uh, is uh, currently running, is turning on and the tests are going to be executed. Here we are. Yes, as you can see here our host information is kernel release 5.14, which is the leap default kernel ver version. But the target version is the kernel Linux 6, which is uh, Tumbleweed, because the distro I installed inside the image is OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. We can also take a look at the vir uh, verbose mode. So we see also what happens inside the virtual machine when uh, uh, we are executing this math testing suite with the QEMU. Yes, and here we are. So as you can see, the QEMU uh, support is working pretty well. We can take a look also at some other uh, testing suites. In particular, I would like to show you what happens when the system is crashing. I made a... Uh, um, 
a testing suite called the System Crash, which is just an echo C in, uh, for the CSRQ trigger. And so let's run it and see what happens. So the virtual machine is booting. And here we have a kernel panic. We reboot the system, we see that everything is, is fine, and then we have the end of the the end of the testing suite. We can take a look at the temporary folder and see what happened. Maybe in the results uh, JSON, we will see that our command was the following, which is proch, Caesar Q trigger, um, um, echo C on, uh, on this file. The trigger is, um, is shown here. We can see the, the standard output, the kernel panic, which has been recognized correctly. And we have a failure at the end of the, um, at the, of the testing suite. Inside the testing suite, I have also an LO0.02. Uh, I just added just to show you that when the system is crashing, we can execute another test after the test that crashed the system. So we have two results, one is failed and one is passed. And so here we are, we have the QMU support now, it's working, but we would like to see, for example, uh, what happens if um, I have my own installation of LTP in my host and I want to share some tests I have inside that particular uh, installation without installing LTP on the virtual machine and uh, let's say just just to use a, a, a normal QCOW image. So we can see there is an option here. Option is really important is the virtual FS uh, option that permits to mount um, a folder in our system to the QMO instance and use that folder to, for example, mount LTP folder, installation folder, and to execute tests which are in my host system. Maybe tests which are under development or stuff like that. So we can take the same command we used before. We use virtfs and we say, okay, let's use my local OPT LTP installation folder and um, just use my the LTP root folder in the target. So in our QMO, which is mount. The reason is that by default, the virtfs is mounted inside the slash mount folder in the virtual machine. And so we have to say to run LTP ng, please use mount folder where the LTP uh, installation is. Let's see what happens. So yes, we just executed the, the math testing suite, which is in our uh, OPT um, installation. installation. We mount this folder in the virtual machine and we run the math testing suite. To show you better, I have uh, uh, an, another image, uh, which is clean. It's a tumbleweed, tumbleweed, ex, um, tumbleweed installation. that doesn't have the OPT LTP folder. Uh, tumbleweed image. I'm sorry, this is a, this is a bug of, um, 
Yes, sometimes happens. I, I have to fix it somehow. There is a ticket for that. It doesn't really happen um, many times, but sometimes it happens. Yeah, so sorry. Uh, I will stop this because I see that there is not enough time for this, but just trust me it's uh, going to it's going to work there are some any uh, some other um some other uh, things we are working on the first one is the ltp executor the ltp executor is a is an executor a, bi a c binary which is used to execute some binaries inside our inside our system under test. It's a small, it's super fast, and it permits to run a parallel execution. This is really important because in the future, we would like to have um, to run many tests at the same time to reduce also the amount of time during the LTP execu run LTP execution. Um, it can be used in any uh, system under test. It means that we can use it in host, we can use it in the, in a virtual machine or in a remote system. And for this reason, it could become our first uh, number one choice in the future. It communicates via message pack serialization format, and it uses uh, any kind of uh, standard input or standard output uh, uh, file descriptor. I can show you just a little example or how it works because we have a branch on it. And um, so let's see. We go in the LTX suit uh, branch, which is the branch having the LTX implementation. We can go in the LTX folder, just build our LTX binary, we have it. We can create, this is just for simple uh, testing, of course, uh, but this uh, transfer file can be everything, can be also exposed via socket. We run it. Okay. And here we just, run LTP help we see what's going on okay LTP parameters are standard input a standard output we can so say standard input it's LTP transport in standard output LTX transport out and we would like to run the math uh, testing suite. Here we are. So here LT LTX just add exit and we have executed with LTX. Don't take a look at this because it's uh, of course something under development. It doesn't make any sense at the moment. But as you can see this uh, this uh, experimental feature is already there. We are developing and it's just a matter of time it becomes uh, it becomes uh, stable. Um, last but not least, uh, what's coming next? Um, so we have uh, developed, we are developing a few other things which are interesting. The SSH support, which is, is really useful if we want to run, for example, tests on uh, remote hosts uh, using SSH or even embedded system, which are exposing the SSHD service. Uh, it's in this SSH Git branch. I won't show you how it works because um, it's most of, it's pretty much the same as the other we've just seen. Um, I can show you the I can show you just the, the parameters it's using. So if you have any question about it uh, or parameters that could be in, uh, added, or you just can ask for that. Um, it's not yet in the main branch in a master branch is just uh, in a SSH Git branch and it's under development. The public cloud team is using it at the moment um, to validate some uh, public cloud images. 
and there is the dynamic load of SAT implementations. Uh, this is a really interesting feature which I'm working at the moment and um, it permits to create some custom uh, system under test uh, uh, protocol communication classes and um, because most of the time it's hard to find a way to cover all the scenarios um, we might have different APIs to communicate with a, with a SUT. We might have many other com customization that the users need or the developer of the test need. So um, now I will show you how it works and actually how both of those are inside our RunLTP and G repo. So first of all, I will show you the SSH branch just uh, Yes, so we have SSH uh, uh, SUT. Uh, we have uh, some options here. As you can see, there's also the policy uh, which has been required uh, for, for public cloud, but it's really useful for anyone, I guess. And, and sudo access for root, root shell because not all the SSH uh, uh, provide their, their root login. I won't show you how it's uh, how it working uh, how it's working, but it's it's currently under using. We will take a look at the uh, SUT plugin. So it's a bit different, as you can see, the supported suit are in a different position. We still have the same one, but the difference is that uh, when we place inside the LTP folder a new SUT implementation, that is recognized dynamically and it's added to the features of the run LTP engine. So if we take a look, for example, at the host, which is our suit implementation here, we see that this is not linked to any kind of uh, code inside of the main or the session file. It's just uh, dynamically mm, uh, fetched uh, during the first execution. So let's take a look how it works. We can take this one, for example, we copy it past inside it and we just change the name. Uh, so we're going to change like uh, presentation. And if we run LTP ng help, you will see that supported suit now our host, host implementation, QMO. It doesn't have any configuration, but, and of course we can just say host presentation and smart, and the suit is going to be used. So if you place inside the LTP New implementation, for example, it could be QMO, it could be SSH, it could be LTX in our case, a host. We don't need to link those implementation or our code them inside the run LTP and G code. We just need to place them inside a folder and run LTP and G will recognize automatically the new set implementation. This is also useful because in the future we plan to have run LTP and G inside the upstream of LTP. And uh, developers can develop their own SUT class um, to run on system under test and to provide all the um, and uh, all the features the, they need inside the the system under test. So this is the end. If you have any questions.